this video is going to be a little bit about the analog discovery and a little bit about the Keithley 2015 that I mentioned in an earlier video and used in some harmonic distortion measurements. I recently bought this uh, meter and this was the eBay listing. I have to say that I was very happy with the results, particularly given the price. The, uh, the seller in this case was uh, very easy to deal with, delivered very quickly, and I got this Keithley for only $350. I previously did not put prices whenever I showed an eBay listing in any of my videos, but I have since recently learned, and I'm no expert on, on uh, social media, so pardon me if this sounds dumb, but I only recently learned that anyone can do a search on eBay and find out exactly what everyone paid for uh, all of the bid items. So at any rate, this was a buy it now item, $350. Uh, it was, uh, I, I think, a very, very good purchase. And what I've been using it for is to test the harmonic distortion of amplifiers. But as you may recall from a previous video, the first thing I did was test the harmonic distortion of the analog discovery waveform generator. The purpose of that was to determine whether the analog discovery 2 was a suitable source for doing harmonic distortion measurements because, of course, if you have a bad generator, you're going to get bad results no matter how good your measuring instrument is. Uh, what I've been doing in that video on harmonic distortion, I only showed values at 1 kilohertz. And I used the uh, not only that instrument, but also this uh, Hewlett-Packard up here. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be comparing the Analog Discovery 2 waveform generator with the internal generator of the Keithley to see how how well it uh, how well it performs. I'm going to do a series of harmonic distortion measurements using the 2015. First on the internal generator of the uh, Keithley and then using the uh, analog discovery. So let me show you first how I did the measurements on the Keithley. What you see is the readout. The Keithley, you can set its internal generator by using the source key and then you turn on the, uh, the sine wave output. I'm going to do that. Then you set its frequency. Here you'll see I have it set to a frequency of 1 kilohertz. The impedance is high impedance, and that's true for both. I also checked the 50 ohm impedance of both, and the results are essentially the same. Uh, there is a difference in the noise, however, and I'll talk about that in a minute. The amplitude here you see is set to 1 volt. The uh, channel 2 output is set to the uh, I sine. Uh, that's basically 180 degrees or inverted sine wave. We're not using that in this case. It's just an output on the back. And you will see that the, the distortion that it measures is about 0.014 or something around there. I uh, sort of rounded it. But now let me show you what happens when I do the change the measurement type to THD plus noise. Okay. The frequency is still auto. The units are in percent. There's no filter used. And you see the uh, the distortion jumps up to 0.134, wherever, whatever you sort of average that by, by eye. I'm going to call that 0.14. What I then did is I ran a series of these total harmonic distortion plus noise uh, 
on every frequency from 20 kilohertz in two, five, ten steps all the way up to 20 kilohertz. In other words, 20 kilohertz, 50 kilo, uh, I'm sorry, 20 hertz, 50 hertz, 100 hertz, 200 hertz, 500 hertz, etc. So let me show you the results that I got. Here, for example, is the reading that I obtained on the internal Keithley generator at 1 kilohertz. And what we are measuring is the uh, THD plus noise, total harmonic distortion plus noise. So, with no filter, and we're reading 0 0.017016. Now what I'm going to do is change the measurement type to just THD. Same auto frequency. And in this case, I'm using the upper harmonics of eight. In other words, I'm using the first eight harmonics, which is usually enough uh, in general. We could raise that number. Uh, I think this will go up to 64 harmonics, uh, but we'll use eight for now because we'll use the same thing when we do the analog discovery. The units are still percentage and no filter. And you see it reads 0.015 total harmonic distortion, uh, once again at a thousand kilohertz. So now let me connect up the analog discovery and do the same thing. Once again we're doing total harmonic distortion plus noise and I now have the analog discovery connected. Uh, auto frequency, uh, in other words it automatically senses the fundamental percent, no filter, and you see we are reading about 0 0.02, call it 027, something around there. Now let's change the measurement to just THD. Everything else remains the same. And you notice that the distortion goes down to 0 0.004, 0.005, sometimes as low as 0 0.003. Let's call it 0 0.005. Quite a bit lower. So why does the internal Keithley show that the readings with or without noise are roughly the same? Whereas on the analog discovery, if we do just THD, we get very low distortion. 0.004, 005%, while if we go to THD plus noise, we get 0.02. I'm puzzled. I'll have to think about this a little bit. It appears to say that the analog discovery without allowing for noise. And I think this has to do with the digital filter, and I'll have to think about this a little bit. I believe what's going on here is because the uh, system uses a fast Fourier transform, when you enable uh, allow noise to be counted as well, you're not just counting the fundamental and its harmonics. You're also counting all of the frequencies below the fundamental and also uh, in between the fundamental and each harmonic. And for example, at one kilohertz you have 60 cycle that's coming through from the room that's probably getting into the analog discovery. Now when I first tried this I thought well maybe it's the fact that I'm powering it off the USB. So I tried plugging in my 5 volt power supply to the analog discovery and the readings remained identical. In other words, very low total harmonic distortion, but not quite so low total harmonic distortion plus noise. So like I say, I'm going to have to think about this, but for right now, let me uh, show you the results that I got across the entire frequency range. Here are the results that I got. Down the left side is the frequency from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. The uh, 
left two columns are for the THD measurement, that is without noise, for the 2015, the Keithley, and the Analog Discovery 2. You notice that the total harmonic distortion for the Analog Discovery 2 is lower consistently across the entire frequency range than the internal generator of the Keithley, except when I got to 20 kilohertz. And I don't know if this is an anomaly in the Keithley. I repeated this measurement three or four times, both for the 2015 as well as for the Analog Discovery 2. And it indicates very, very low distortion at 20 kilohertz. Now, 20 kilohertz is the limit of both the generator in the Keithley as well as the harmonic distortion analyzer. So it may be that there is something about the digital filter that throws away too many harmonics up here, and that's why it reads such a low number. But nonetheless, except for 20 kilohertz, the Analog Discovery 2 did consistently better by quite a bit than the Keithley internal generator. However, when I measured total harmonic distortion plus noise, the analog discovery did consistently worse. You notice that throughout the range, the Keithley read about the same with the THD plus noise as it did with just THD. And it was fairly consistent across the entire range. I'm going to have to think about what this really means because I'm not sure whether it's an anomaly in the Keithley or whether it's an anomaly in the uh, setup, or it's something about the noise output of the uh, analog discovery. Now, one thing that I am aware of, in addition to the characteristics of digital filters, is the fact that the analog discovery 2 wave gen is an arbitrary waveform generator, which means that it generates the signals using a digital to analog converter. That means that the signal has small steps in it. I haven't really looked at whether that might explain where this, in other words, it may be that the Keithley is reading those steps, which discontinuities in a fast Fourier transform will cause a lot of noise to show up in the, uh, in the final uh, spectral analysis. And so it very well may be that this is simply due to the fact that if you include the noise, the Keithley uh, interprets all those little steps in the uh, sine wave as significant noise. And that may be why that the analog discovery does so poorly when you include noise in the measurement. But nonetheless, I don't know if uh, this is of much interest to anyone. I did this so I could have some confidence about the operation of the analog discovery over the audio frequency range. But uh, this may be of use to somebody else. Uh, like I say, I thought it might be power supply, so I tried a 5-volt external supply and so on. I was unable to find any way to get rid of this. I tried moving the leads away from the AC. Uh, I tried putting a piece of metal between, a uh, piece of grounded metal between the uh, analog discovery and the nearest AC outlets. It didn't seem to make any difference. So I'm not sure whether 60 Hertz had anything to do with this. I suspect that the additional noise here is due to the steps in the uh, arbitrary waveform generator being misinterpreted by the Keithley as noise. So at any rate, I hope this has been of some use and interest to most of you. Uh, if so, well, I'm going to continue to do some, some more analog discovery uh, work. And uh, who knows where we'll go from here. Maybe go back to some of the uh, uh, Beasley and Miller experiments or maybe off in another direction. At any rate, have a good day and we'll see you in a future video.